All right, now that we've gotten kind of an overview of the strategies and looked at the scientific method in detail, I would refer you to the, the graphic in your book to understand the cyclical nature of the um, scientific method uh, because we start with a theory, we create a hypothesis, it leads to the research and observations that we collect and then we m further confirm, reject, revise, and then continue to develop the theory accordingly and that's the circular nature of it. Description and correlation are the two that we're going to hit um, on in this particular video and description itself um, oftentimes is part of um, community psychology or other uh, uh, methods that don't allow us to manipulate variables. Description really focuses only on, as the name suggests, is what is. We're not trying to really uh, um, change anything or, or manipulate variables. We're trying to describe what actually exists. So there's three different methods. First of all, case study, um, case studies uh, which actually were the uh, ground zero for a lot of psychology's beginnings. Uh, Wundt and his students looked at individuals and that's part of the case study um, uh, example. Uh, Freud, most of what he did was really around specific case studies of individuals um, and usually it's built on anecdotes uh, that are developed as a part of studying individuals and Freud was masterful uh, for all of his faults and for all of the hits that he often takes Freud was masterful at documenting um, elements of individuals and the, the his was uh, was um, the basis on which many case studies occur. We use case studies in order to describe a phenomenon and then begin to broaden it if we see more and more examples of that. In this case, a lot of times we refer to this as n equals 1. It's, it's no more than one person at a time and that's part of case studies. The second thing uh, really is, is a, a naturalistic observations and this really is, um, you know, built on, as the n name implies, is we, m the observer, uh, becomes as um, uh, invisible as possible. And so we, we watch uh, in the actual environment itself and try to make all the observations um, that we can given the data that is before us rather than making any changes in the environment and it's very much like case study except that uh, this is not built on um, reports by people which is a lot of times what case studies are built on but on s straight observations that people make and that is part of, um, like it says, naturalistic observation. So we'll, we'll end it at that point. So straight observation. The third one in, um, um, in uh, the descriptive category is the survey. And uh, as a lot of you are freshmen, uh, you will be taking a number of surveys. If you're in an FYI class, it gets a little brain numbing to take so many surveys, but that's exactly how we get data. Now the problem with surveys oftentimes is what we refer to as an observer bias um, and the uh, how I view myself and the data that I'm providing is very much driven by the, the data or the um, um, of the environment I'm in. Surveys polls are good examples. We're in the election cycle. Polls are talked about on a regular basis. How these all are put together are the key to um, um, their accuracy. What is key to surveys and polls is something we refer to as representative sampling. In other words, in a community uh, or in a given ethnic group, um, I want to be able to sample the, the various aspects of it that represent the larger group. 
and representative samples are uh, are an attempt to do that. So when when um, uh, a lot of these polls look at, for example, registered voters, they're going to look at different ethnicities within registered voters and try to capture the percentages in that overall group to re to represent the uh, percentages that are in the larger group at hand and that as part of it so three aspects of description case studies naturalistic observation and surveys and polls are part of that and and I will have you do surveys even in our class on a regular basis just so you can see the variety of opinions represented even within uh, your class itself so description is the first one the second method we're going to highlight is correlation and this is probably the the most uh, misunderstood um, uh, method in uh, experimentation or in research partly because a lot of people think that correlation is the same as correlation equals causation in other words if I say that there's a relationship between one thing and another, then then that will that means that the first item, let's just say for example smoking, a lot of people say, a lot of research would suggest that smoking um, is correlated with a low birth weight. Now that's correlated with it because we're only talking about two different two things, two items, uh, smoking and low birth weight in, in babies when they're born. But they're not the same. They, they do not mean that smoking causes low birth weight because we've got way too many things to, uh, to factor in, in terms of genetics, uh, the mom and dad, uh, perhaps they were low birth weight babies, but their mom didn't smoke. So there's too many factors to come into play. So correlation does not equal causation. Uh, the key to understanding correlation is, is understanding uh, the ranges of correlation. Uh, for correlation, it can range from w 1 to negative 1, with 0 obviously in the middle. So a, a straight correlation of 1 is when all the data matches up along a given line. And that's, that's, that's a, a straight, completely, perfectly positive uh, uh, correlation. You never find them, okay? Uh, a perfect negative correlation is when one rises and the other, the other uh, item uh, decreases. And that's a negative correlation. Negative one is down here, okay? Um, if we talk about something that has no relationship at all, generally the data is spread across th in the center, and generally that's just zero. In other words, there's no relationship whatsoever between the items that we're looking at. What this is called is called a scatter plot, as you would probably guess, because the data points are scattered along either a descending line or an ascending line or they're scattered all across the uh, the area here so that there's no specific um, uh, relationship per se or pattern per se that exists in correlation itself you will uh, have an opportunity to look at a variety of data that usually will use correlation. The coefficient is the R coefficient that is part of um, uh, determining the aspect of correlation itself. The thing to keep in mind is this one key, is that correlation does not equal causation. A lot of people would uh, uh, get that confused and a good example is even in in your book when they talk about the length of marriage is correlated with hair loss in men does one cause the other well one would certainly not certainly hope not but that's a good example of a correlation versus a causation and that is key to understanding um, the the correlation itself so let me just 
review for you for just a second, and that is that that when we're talking about causation or correlation, I should say, that this line, where all the data points congregate along this line, would be a perfect 1.0. Okay, um, and and usually what you see is that the data points are very close along this line, but unless they lie along the line itself, they are not, it is not 1.0. Rarely, like I said, do you ever find anything like this. The other one is the negative correlation, and that is a complete descending line. That's negative 1.0. And the, the middle point, and these are Line, line or data points do not line up along a line like this. Typically, they are scattered across these lines that would not provide any kind of evidence for relationship, and this is zero. This continuum from one to negative one falls along what we refer to as an R coefficient, and that is uh, something that measures the. Um, measures the correlation okay so uh, first one that we looked at was uh, the whole idea of um, uh, description which had a case study the naturalistic observation and also the survey the second item is correlation itself this is probably the one that you will see in most of your journal articles that uh, take a look at it specifically um, all right, let's move on to the last one, which is experimentation, and it has a lot of stuff within it that to help you understand, um, and let me move on to that one.